our next speakers. They don't really need an introduction. I am eager, personally, I have to say this, I am eager, I don't want to say desperate, but I am <laughs> eager <laughs> to hear what they have to present. Now, we just heard the African Export-Import Bank. The next set of speakers you're going to hear from are from the U.S. Export-Import Bank. Now, this is the moment of truth. If you live in any city, I have to say this, and I'm going to introduce these ladies, and we're going to rock and roll. If you live in any city, I don't care if it's Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, Cleveland, wherever you come from, and, and you have minority businesses that want to do business in Africa, you need to take notes, record this, because you're about to witness the education of your life. <laughs> you can clap to that. I'm serious. This is serious. The first speaker I'm going to introduce is Ms. Tamara Maxwell. She's the director of the Minority and Women-Owned Business and Multiplier Outreach Division of the Export-Import Bank of the United States. Next to her is Ms. Latanya Darden. She's the Business Development Specialist Minority and Women-Owned Business and Multiplier Outreach Division of the Exim Bank of the United States. You can give them a hand. Give these ladies a hand. Now, you're talking about linking the wealth, the time, the moment of truth is at hand. So I'm going to let Ms. Maxwell, I'm let Ms. Maxwell take the floor, and I'm going to let her educate us. Thank you for coming, ladies. Thank you. And please, do your thing. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so first, I want to say thank you. This has been an enlightening experience for me. So I have learned a lot. And hopefully you can learn a lot from us so that we can continue to work together and, and do business together. Um, as he said, we're from Exim Bank, but this first presentation that I'm going to give is not about Exim Bank. It's about the Department of Commerce Commercial Service. It's going to be really quick because I don't work for them, but... <laughs> What they do is very critical for U.S. businesses. So you really, really need to know what they do and how they can help you. So I'm just going to talk about a few things that they offer because it's important for U.S. businesses as well as businesses that are in Africa. So really quick. Um, oh, point up there. There we go. <laughs> and bear with me because I can't see over there, so I'm going to just follow this here. Um, the commercial service is a part of the Department of Commerce, and Department of Commerce is an agency that has their federal government agency, just like Exxon Bank, and they have a lot of agencies that fall within them. One of those agencies is here today, which is um, Minority Business Development Agency, who we work very closely with, and you'll hear from them once LaTanya and I are finished. But the Department of Commerce commercial service has um, U.S. employees who are in countries in over 170 countries. Their sole purpose is to advocate for U.S. businesses in those countries. So if you're a U.S. citizen and you're paying tax dollars, you are paying for those individuals in those countries to help you do business in the countries that they're in. So you're already paying for them, why aren't you using them? It doesn't make sense to me. And that's this, that map that was just up there is a list of the countries of where they are. So if they're not housed in a country on there, doesn't mean that they don't do business in, in, in that particular country because sometimes one person may handle multiple countries. So you definitely need to make sure that you're in contact with the commercial service. They're also, this is the map of them in the U.S. So they're in, they have what they call, these are all export centers. Exim Bank is in 13, 12 of those export centers. So an export center in 12 of them, they have Exim Bank, they have commercial service, and they have um, SBA. 
So we call it a one-stop shop. Those are called Usiacs. So when you go to one that has that in it, you can talk to any of those um, agencies and they can tell you what services they provide. So how can they help you? So if you look at it, they develop and they develop, they help companies develop export strategies. They do partner pro, um, partner background checks. So if you're looking at doing partnering with a company in another country, they can do a background check for you. They match make, they do matchmaking trips overseas, where let's say you have a company or you decide you want to start marketing in a country. They will have it to where they set up where you to go into go to country, set up meetings for businesses who are actually looking for your product or service. They will accompany you to those businesses. This is what your tax dollars is already paying for. All you have to do is contact them to start utilizing it. So of course, all of the stuff that they do has a little fee to it, but it's, mu it's nothing compared to what you would pay trying to do it on your own. They provide counseling with overseas staff. They promote um, your products overseas, and they do that by sometimes if they're going to a trade show, you can give them your product and your information, and they will take your, their product with them and promote it for you. Um, export regulations and compliance and trade shows um, to attend. So the Department of Commerce Commercial Service is where we tell companies to go to prior to coming to Exim Bank because they help you enter markets, they help you find buyers, they help you find distributors, they help you with your export regulations, your rules. They are the ones who you go to first and then you come to Exim Bank. So I'm just going to skip through some of these slides because I kind of gave you a brief description of what they do. And this is the contact of the person who's actually here in Chicago. And what I'm going to ask is that with all of our presentations that we're going to give today, I'm going to ask if you can send it out to everyone if they want them. Um, it's going to be a lot of information that we're going to go over and cover. So I just wanted to give you a brief overview of Department of Commerce and Commercial Service because they are the ones you go to first and then you come to Exim Bank. And you can also work with us while you're working with them, but they can help you get into markets that you're not necessarily in. So I'm going to turn it over to Latanya. She's going to do a brief overview of Exim Bank and then I'm going to go into the detail of the programs that can really help you grow your business. But prior to me turning it over to her, I do want to say um, we are a part of the U.S. government. So being that we're a part of the U.S. government, there are certain rules and regulations that we have to follow. Certain things you may ask us questions and we may not answer them. So just... <laughs> Keep in mind that we are a part of the U.S. government. Um, I've been at Exim Bank for 26 years now, I believe. So I've been there for a very long time. I know the ropes of Exim Bank. I know the ins and outs of Exim Bank. And one of the things that I would like to see is I would like to see more minority businesses come to Exim Bank to get the financing. It's not because we don't have it, it's not because we don't want to. It's quite honestly because you guys just aren't coming to us. You're just not coming to us. Um, we finally got our board. We were without a board for five years now. So for five years, we couldn't do any transactions over 10 million. We were still doing the smaller transactions, the smaller deals, but we couldn't do large deals. We have a board now. They've been there for about two months. We just yesterday, at, while we were here, we just got the email that they um, bought back our Sub-Saharan Africa Advisory Committee. So, yes, 
there are a lot of things happening at the bank right now. And now is the time. Our new chairman is a woman. <laughs> First woman chairman. And she is, she's committed to getting Exxon Bank to where Exxon Bank was prior to us not having a chairman and prior to us not having a board. So we had our first board meeting yesterday. We missed it because we were here. Um, but we're okay with that. In our first board meeting, they did approve a transaction that um, is for Cameroon. So we're excited about that. So as I say, we are doing things at Exxon Bank now that we haven't done in a while. So now is the time for you guys to come to us and we can help you get your transactions through. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to LaTanya. There you go. Good afternoon. Uh, before I start, I would like to say thank you to Toyin and her team for giving XM the platform to share this platform uh, at this conference. It has been very eye-opening. It has been wonderful, and I'm just glad that XM could play a part and participate in this conference. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the bank um, and talk about a couple of our products that we offer in our programs. Uh, as Tammy said, we are an independent agency of the federal government. We were established around 85 years or so ago. Our headquarters is in Washington, D.C., and that is where the minority and women-owned business division is. Now, we do have an office here in Chicago, I believe downtown on North Michigan Avenue. Uh, but the Minority and Women-Owned Business Team is located in D.C., and that would be your first contact should you, you know, need our products and services. Uh, and simply, our mission is to create and sustain jobs by increasing U.S. export sales. Now, 95% of the world's consumers are outside of the U.S. border, so we encourage people to consider exporting. If they're not doing so, they're really doing themselves and their business a disservice by not exporting. And only 1% of U.S. companies export, and why is that? Fear of the unknown, and we are here to remove that fear. And these are some questions that an exporter may have, uh, even if they've been exporting for a while or even if they're just new to exporting. You know, they're apprehensive about entering a new market or they have concerns about if they'll get paid or even when they'll get paid. Our export credit insurance is the product or the program that is the solution to those questions. If you need cash to make your product, our working capital loan guarantee is the solution. And You've made a big sale, but your buyer's not able to get financing. That's where our medium and long-term insurance and guarantees come into play. Now, at Exxon Bank, small business is our business. And in fiscal year 2018, over $3 billion of financing went to support small businesses. That's approximately 66% of the bank's total transactions. And over 2,000 small business transactions were approved in fiscal year 2018. Now, we are the official export credit agency for the United States, and our programs and financing does make the difference to determine whether you will win or lose a sale. Our products minimize the risk for lenders with our working capital loan guarantee program as well as exporters with our export credit or trade credit insurance. Our products also level the playing field. With our insurance, you're able to compete with exporters across the globe. So those exporters in other countries, they're offering credit terms to buyers, the same buyers that you are vying for. So our programs do level the playing field in that regard. And our programs also supplements commercial financing. 
our lenders, we take the risk that the traditional lender may not be willing to take. And so we come in and supplement the financing for those traditional lenders or the exporters. Now, here are industries or sectors that the bank finances or supports or provides financing for. And there are divisions at XM Bank dedicated to underwrite or support or review transactions in these sectors. For instance, our project finance division processes renewable energy and power generation transactions. Uh, the, the oil and gas transactions are processed from our Houston, Texas office. Our transportation division processes aircraft and avionics transactions. Now services, when we are doing outreach, we are finding that more and more companies, they don't have a tangible product, but they do provide a service. And the services are reviewed on a case by case basis and the full gamut of services are covered, such as IT consulting, transportation freight forwarding services, legal services, the full gamut of services are covered by XM Bank. Now, financing covers the spectrum with our working capital loan guarantee, which is our pre-export financing we refer to as that. And with these funds, you can purchase raw materials, um, labor and overhead costs, anything that's related to the export side of your business. And to our post-export financing, which is our trade credit insurance, medium and long-term guarantees, and some direct loans. Now, the direct loans, again, as Tammy mentioned, we hadn't been doing any because we didn't have a board. We couldn't finance any transactions over $10 million. Those transactions are usually set aside for capital equipment for large projects that may uh, be occurring in a country. Our working capital guarantee provides the funds that you need to fulfill your orders. Again, your labor and overhead, your raw materials, anything related to the export side of the business. Our receivables insurance, also known as our export credit insurance, provides risk protection against non-payment due to commercial or political risk. Uh, you can extend credit to buyers with the insurance policy. And it also is a means of access to capital. Because while you are waiting to get paid per those terms that you've offered to your buyer, you can assign the policy to a lender and they in turn will give you the cash that you may need to fulfill the influx of orders that you're receiving now that you're offering those terms. And then we have our medium and long term insurance and guarantees for buyer financing. Again, if there's a buyer in a country that wants to purchase U.S. goods, but they're not able to get the financing, that's where the medium and long term uh, guarantees and insurance comes into play. Our working capital guarantee is a guarantee to a lender. It's not to the exporter. The guarantee is to the lender, which makes them more willing to finance or advance on the foreign receivables. Without the guarantee of the federal government, lenders are not going to advance on foreign receivables. Uh, there is a 90% guarantee to the lender, and it also covers standby letters of credit. Now, our export credit insurance, this is the most popular program or product that our clients use because there are really three basic benefits for having a policy, but they are really the most important. It protects against buyer non-payment. Again, if you have a buyer that has not paid you according to the terms you've agreed to, once you have done your exhausted all measures to try to recover, you can submit a claim to XM Bank. We will pay you 95% of the value of your invoice, and then we will go after the buyer. OK, it expands sales and develops new markets. So it again, it allows you to offer open account terms, and it eliminates the needs for buyers to pay you cash in advance. Buyers will buy more from you if they don't have to pay cash in advance. So it's really to your advantage to offer credit terms. 
it also increases the borrowing base of the exporter. It increases exporters' borrowing base with their lenders by assigning XM's insurers receivables as collateral. So we do have a charter that we have to adhere to. Here are just some of the uh, stipulations in the charter. We will not support or fund sales to another country's military or defense-related products only in the event of humanitarian efforts such as food drops or if there is a disaster and the United States is filling in or helping, assisting rather, that's when we will uh, consider that. There is a U.S. content requirement for our products or to use our uh, programs. It must be, the product must have at least 51% of U.S. content for the standard or short-term transactions and for medium-term transactions, the U.S. content must be at least 85%. And we also have a restricted country schedule, also known as the CLS. I advise clients to go to our website and check the schedule when they're considering doing business in a country. There, the schedule will let you know where we're open to do business and how long, whether it be both the public and the private sector. So please check the schedule before you decide to do business in the country. I believe the schedule has been recently updated and it was due to be published next week on the 9th, I believe, the new schedule comes out. So just to recap what I've talked about this afternoon, um, please call XM if you have a bar that wants credit terms uh, or you are apprehensive about selling overseas because of the risk of non-payment or you're losing opportunities because you're only requiring or will accept cash in advance or letters of credit. That's where our export credit insurance product is the solution to these uh, challenges. If you are encountering cash flow problems due to an increase in foreign sales, that's when you would utilize our working capital loan guarantee program. Again, that loan program will provide the funds that you need to purchase uh, finished products you may be exporting, raw materials, um, any labeling, branding, anything that's related to make to finish that product that you're exporting, that's what you can use the working capital loan proceeds for. And then if you have a buyer that needs several years to pay for capital equipment, that's where our medium and long-term insurance and guarantees come into play. Now, here are some additional resources that are available to you. We are a small agency and we rely on these resources to help us to raise awareness about XM Bank because we find that not even half of the United States businesses are aware that we even exist. So we rely on these resources to help us raise awareness. We have insurance brokers. Our brokers are trained by XM Bank. They help businesses apply for their policy. Uh, report shipments, which you must do, and in the event that you would need to file a claim, they are there for that as well. And basically, they are just there to help the business get the most use out of their policy to better utilize it. We also have our regional export promotion program members, known as REP. These are state and local organizations that help raise awareness about XM Bank. Now, we do have <clears throat> excuse me, a rep organization here, the MBDA Export Center. They are a valuable resource to XM Bank and very active. And they are located here in Chicago and they are experts in export and the financing that is available to help companies export. Then we have our delegated lenders, which are banks, lending institutions that we provide a guarantee to to extend loans to exporters. So again, the guarantee is to these lenders, not to the exporter, but with the guarantee they are more willing to finance export related loans to small businesses. And then we have our U.S. Export Assistance Centers, also known as USIACs that Tamara mentioned earlier. I refer to these also as one-stop shops because there you have all of the federal government resources 
available export resources in one location. That eliminates the need for you to have to go to SBA one day, the Department of Commerce the next. They're all located in one area. And these are on our website, or you can find them on export.gov. And so that concludes the basic overview of XM Bank. Um, there is more to it once you get deep into the weeds, but that just provided you with a basic overview of the services that we offer. Thank you, Latoya. <laughs> so I'm going to be real honest with you guys. I hardly ever use a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to try my best to do this today. <laughs> Normally, I just talk off the cuff because I can tell you exactly what we do and how it's going to help you. But I'm going to try to work on this presentation today and follow it the best I can. <laughs> I usually get right into it on what, how our programs can help you the most and what you need to do to get the most out of each one of our programs. So I'm going to talk about our short-term insurance. Um, wanna, before, but before I do that, I do want to talk about, you know, we're the Export-Import Bank of the U.S. So most countries have an Exim Bank, um, not always called Exim Bank. It could be um, like the EDC if from Canada. So most of the countries have an um, export credit agency. But, and not sure if you're aware of it, but... What I've found over the years is that a lot of us do different things for the businesses in our country. So when I was listening to Africa XM, they do a lot of stuff that's in country. We won't. We cannot do anything that is in country. Everything that we do has to be tied to an export. So it doesn't mean that so, for example, services can be provided in the U.S., but as long as it's being provided to a company or that's outside of the U.S. So that's something that's happening in country, but it has to be tied to an export. So I think it's important for you to understand when you're looking at a country that you're going to be exporting to or when you're looking at a country that you're going to be um, going into, you really should pay attention to what that country's XM does because what happens a lot is that the two countries work together to make the deal happen. So we can work with Africa XM to make a transaction happen and so that it gets done. We do deals with you know, um, the EDC. We do deals with uh, COFAS, which is in France. So we do deals with other countries and we partner together. So I think it's, it's important when you're looking at trade and when you're looking at international financing to really understand how who you're selling to can utilize their XM in their country to help you make the deal happen. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I think that um, what I heard today from Africa XM and, and all the initiatives that they have going on, which meaning, you know, developing the testing center, developing the, um, the incubators, that, to me, though, that is excellent information because if they're developing all of these things and you're a company here in the U.S. and you want to send over equipment from here to help develop that, to help put the infrastructure together, the, um, to, to make sure that everything gets done, then be a part of what they're doing and use US XM to help you get the equipment there to be able to make this happen and happen in a faster way. Now, one thing I will say is that you are going to be competing with a lot of companies in other countries, China, Germany, everywhere. But I can say that our products are the best. Everybody knows that. And it lasts longer. And we can help you finance that so that it can go over, so the equipment can go over there. And then it can be used not just for what you sent it over there for, but for other things as well. So 
And I, I, I just could go on forever like that. But let me tell you about the insurance. <laughs> so our insurance is, um, and it, it protects against non-payment of foreign accounts receivable. It does not make bad credit good. It doesn't do that. And that's what a lot of people think. If a credit is bad, it's bad. Whether you have our insurance or not, it's still a bad credit. So that's not what it's for. As Latanya said, our insurance is protects against non-payment um, non for, by foreign buyers. It covers commercial risk, and it also covers political risk. Um, we have for our short-term insurance, it's usually up to 180 days. It can be up to 360 days for different um, equipment. And our medium term and long term is much longer than that. But I'm really honing in on short term because this is the product that is going to help most businesses if you're selling a product overseas and even a service because you're going to be offering terms which are usually 30, 60, or 90 days. How does this um, insurance policy work? So you as the US exporter, you have a good or service, you, you sell it to your buyer, your, you give them 30, 60, or 90 days, the buyer then pays you. If they don't pay you, you file a claim to us. As Latanya said, we'll go after that um, buyer. Our default ratio is very, very low. And that is because nobody wants to owe the US government. <laughs> they don't want to owe us. And we do go after the buyer. Most of the time it doesn't get that far because once you try to collect and they find out that, okay, well, they know already that you have insurance with the XM, but once they realize that we're going to start calling them, then that's when they go ahead and they pay you. So what does it do? It's risk mitigation. So I always... Um, I always tell companies that if you're looking at doing business overseas and you do not have an excellent bank insurance policy, then you're doing it backwards. You're doing it backwards. Because even if you don't have any customers now, I tell companies, get the insurance policy. Use it as a marketing tool. Use it as a marketing tool. How many times do you go overseas, you go to other countries, and you're negotiating, you're talking, and then you're trying to figure out how we're going to finance this. If you have that insurance policy already, you can go to that customer. I can give you 60 days. Do you know what doors that's going to open for you? Tremendous doors. Because the companies from Germany, the companies from China, they're already doing that. They're offering 30, 60, 90 days. It's usually the U.S. businesses that aren't doing that because fear, plain and simple fear. And I guess I would fear, too, if I didn't have an Exxon Bank backing me. So use it as a marketing tool. Um, it's competitive, as I said, competitiveness, marketing tool, utilization of accounts receivable as an asset. Latanya kind of talked about all of that already. Assigning a policy to a lender. This is key because as a small business, you're wondering, uh, 30, 60, 90 days? I can't afford to do that. Well, if, if you assign it to a commercial bank, they're going to take it because you have the government saying, okay, if that buyer doesn't pay, the U.S. government's going to pay. And they can pay you up front for those receivables. They're going to discount it. But it's okay because it helps you be able to continue with your cash flow and continue to fill those export orders that are coming in. What we see when a company gets an insurance policy through Exim Bank, they start with us. Maybe let's just say you're a $200,000 company. We see our companies grow like that because what happens is when they start offering the insurance, those buyers start buying more. And other 
businesses in that country who are buying the same type of um, equipment or materials or whatever it is you're selling, they're going to start calling you because you're giving terms to their competitor. And so now you're going to be selling to multiple companies. And you're also no longer afraid to go to other markets because you know you're covered. Okay, this is just some of the type of policies that we have. We have multi-buyer policies. Multi-buyer policies are policies that you receive from Exim Bank, and that, tell, that says you're going to give us your entire book of business that you're selling to on open account, and we're going to cover everybody, and we're going to cover them all under one rate. It's not going to be you pick the worst credit, and we cover them, we want all. We want all of the companies, and we're going to cover them all under one rate. And it's only the ones that, are, um, sell, that you're selling to an open account. Why did we do this? Because that rate is much lower than if you um, do single buyer policy, which is down here as well. So the single buyer policies, and I'll tell you what those rates are, are for the multi-buyer in just a second. The single buyer policies are based on each individual buyer, and the rate is based on the country that you're exporting to and their risk rate. So your single buyer policies are a little more expensive than your multi-buyer policy. We always tell all of our customers that are coming in, if you qualify for a small business multi-buyer policy, then do that, because it's going to cost you less in the long run. And how Exim Banks and po policies work. So let's say you apply for an insurance policy for, with us. You get a policy from us, then you give us your buyers. You can continue to add buyers as you go. So you don't have to give us all of your buyers at one time. To get the policy, we're looking at you. We want to see your company. We want to see what your company does. And we give you the policy, and then you give us your buyers and then we'll, we will approve your buyers. This express policy, this policy is a new policy for small businesses, and with this one, it's where you give us your um, list of buyers, and we do the due diligence on getting the information about the buyers. So with the multi-buyer policy, you have to give us um, the company information. It may be a trade reference or a bank reference, depending on the amount that you're looking for to get them approved. But with the express policy, we do the due diligence and we um, get the credit information that we need from the buyers. I'm going to skip through these because that's the same thing with the policy types. So with the policy parameters, what, what's important here is the policy payment limit. So everyone who gets a policy, let's say you come and you apply for a $100,000 policy. A lot of, some people come in and they apply for, you know, $2 million, $3 million policies. You can apply for whatever you want. We're going to look at your company and we're going to look and see what really makes sense. And you might apply for a $100,000 policy, and I'm using small numbers. Um, because it's easier for me to calculate. So, <laughs> so you apply for a $100,000 policy, and we look at your company and say, you know what? Right now, we don't think you're ready for a $100,000 policy. We're going to give you $50,000. do not be defeated. It's OK. So we're going to tell you the um, time frame that you can offer. We're going to say you can offer 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. We tell you, and you might, you, you might say, I want 60-day terms, and we'll say, okay, you're going to get 60-day terms. That doesn't mean that that's what you have to tell your buyer. You, you might, we might approve you for 60-day terms, and you might tell them 30. So, and let's say you have $100,000, and you ship to one buyer $100,000, and they pay you in 30 days you're able to ship another 100000 that right after that payment comes in. 
So you could be shipping $100,000 every 30 days on a $100,000 policy. So that's how the, it can make your business grow. So where you're starting at a $100,000 company, but then you keep growing because you're shipping every time that payment is made. Um, and your policy amount, so if you're at $100,000, you can, what that means is that you can never have more than $100,000 outstanding at one time. So if you have 10 buyers and you ship to one buyer that whole $100,000, then your other nine buyers have to wait until that payment is made before you can ship to them. So you can, now you can come in and you can ask us for waivers and depending on what your, um, what your um, history looks like, we may approve that waiver, we may not. So a lot of companies come in and they ask for amounts that are just way above what their company's um, documents show that they can handle. And they get a lower amount and they feel deflated. Don't, because realistically, if you were a bank and I came to you and I had $5 in my account and I asked you for a million dollars because I had a contract. Would you give me that million dollars? No. So it has to make sense. It's not because we're trying to turn anything down. That's not the case. We're a government agency. We are um, here to protect the U.S. taxpayers dollars. And so we have to make sure that the transactions make sense and we have to make sure that it's a reasonable reassurance of repayment. That's the biggest thing that we look at. We do do a lot of waivers because um, as someone said here earlier that our credit standards say that you have to be in business for three years for, in order to apply for um, insurance. That's what it says, but we do a lot of waivers. Our credit standards are in the process of being um, looked at and redone along with our charter and a whole bunch of other things. And one of the things that I asked for was that the credit standard for three years be taken out because it doesn't make any sense when we have a ton of businesses that haven't been in business for three years that have been approved through X, for X and bank insurance. So just because something says it, doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case. What we always tell companies is, call one of us. We can tell you, we can look at it, and we can say whether or not we think we can get this done. Latanya and I sit on the same floor in the same wing as the insurance underwriters. We see them every day, every single day. <laughs> we, my boss is their boss. so. We have, we can get a lot done. We just need for you guys to come to us to see if we can get it done. Um, we've had transactions where it's been denied. And then they've called me and I've looked at it. I've done, I've been in underwriting. I know what they look at. I know what they do. So I can look at it and say, hmm. This shouldn't be denied. Why was this denied? And we've gotten it turned, overturned. So that's the type of stuff that we can do at XM Bank. And, but we can't do that if you don't come. <laughs> um, so that's just about the policy. I told you I don't do well with these slides. <laughs> so the cost. This is critical. And this is important because it's, it's not a lot. It does not cost a lot for you to have insurance. So with the small business policy, which is the multi-buyer policy, most of the people get one to 60 days. And class three is the private sector. So it's 55 cents for every $100 that you ship. That's how much it costs. That's nothing. That's nothing to be able to, what we say, sleep at night, knowing that your money, I mean, your, your products is, are covered 
and if that buyer does not pay, we're going to pay you. So to pay 55 cents for every $100, it doesn't make any sense. And what I always tell people is, you know, if you're selling, have a cash price and have a credit price. Make them pay for it. Make them pay for it. And if you're selling to the government, it's 16 cents for every 100 that you ship if you're doing 60 days. And this next one is the express policy. And this is the one to where we find out about the company. You don't have to give us a credit report. You don't have to give us a bank reference. You don't have to give us a trade reference. We charge you 10 cents more. So it's 65 cents for every $100 that you ship. I talked a little bit about the credit standards. I'm going to skip right over this because um, they're in the process of being changed. They're taking some of the things out and potentially adding some things. Get, call one of us. There's, what do I have now, 11? Yeah. <laughs> There's 11. I have 10, 11 people that report to me. And pretty much all of them are working in the minority and women-owned division. Um, when I first started the division, it was just me. It was just me. And now there's 11 of us. So that shows the commitment that Exim Bank has to making sure that this division is up and running and that we're, you know, making a difference. So Latanya talked a little bit about our product eligibility. One of the biggest, biggest things that we have is the U.S. content. So U.S. content, it has to be at least 50 one percent U.S. content if we're going to be financing it or assisting with the finance. Um, so if you have products m coming in from all over the place or pieces of a product, so like this right here, I usually have a pen near me, and a pen has so many different things and they're all coming in from different countries and you bring it into the U.S. and you put it together here, then it's considered over 51% U.S. content. Because what we do is we look at the value of the finished product, not each individual piece of the product. We look at the value of the finished product. So if you're bringing something in and you repackage it or you add value, and the value that you add is more than 51%, then it qualifies. Um, if you're looking at services, services the, um, have to be performed by uh, U.S. personnel, and it can be performed here in the U.S. or overseas. So one example that I always give is if you have a uh, transportation company and you're hired by a, a company, let's just say, in Nigeria, and the company in Nigeria is shipping these tables to the U.S. And they've hired you to pick those tables up from the dock and deliver it to places in the U.S. That's considered an export because you provided the service of moving that equipment around in the U.S. That qualifies for Exim Bank financing as long as it's U.S. personnel that is doing that. So I see a lot of head shaking. It's unbelievable what we do, and most people don't know. We always, people always say that we are the um, best kept secret in the U.S. government. We don't feel that way <laughs> working at Exim. You know, we want the information out. One of the things that um, I noticed was that when we used to have a global business development office, and those were people in Exim Bank who traveled throughout the world to educate the foreign businesses how to buy from us. And what I noticed was that in Africa, the businesses in Africa knew more about U.S. Exim than the U.S. businesses did. Yes, they do. And that's because they wanted to buy 
and they knew that we provide buyer financing. So as this, one of the programs that we have is the medium term. If you're a business in Africa and you want to buy from the U.S., then that's a medium term transaction. We get a U.S. bank involved and we guarantee that U.S. bank that if they fund the U.S. company that's going to be shipping to that foreign buyer, then we guarantee that that foreign buyer is going to pay. It's the same for short term and medium term. So I'm just going to, I'm just skipping over some of the things that Latonya already covered. But the, um, just to give you an example of the little information that we need. So if you're, if you're, if you want your buyer to have uh, up to $100,000, we need a credit report or, um, that's not right. That's supposed to be a bank reference. Because we don't need a credit report. This slide is wrong. <laughs> this slide is wrong. Sorry. Um, so if it's $100,000, we need a, a trade reference or a bank reference. We don't need credit reports for everything. The only time we need a credit report if it's over $300,000. So ignore this slide because this is wrong. I'm going to skip right over that one. <laughs> Um, I'm going to skip this one as well. And the rest, the rest of the um, slides is about our online application process. This, like I said, whenever you're going on a trade mission or you're going to another country, get the insurance policy before you go. Have a negotiating tool. It just makes sense to have that. Now, the one thing that uh, most of us don't want to hear is about the clients. Mo the number one reason that claims are not paid at Exxon Bank is because people don't pay their premium. That is the number one reason. And you know why I don't pay their premium? It's because we don't hound you. We're not bill collectors. So it is your job to report your shipment and to pay when you ship. Because with our policies, you only pay when you ship. You don't pay us every month. If you're not shipping, there's no need in paying us. You only pay when you ship. So, <laughs> so the number one reason that claims aren't paid is because you ship, but you forget to report it, and you forget to pay until it's, they don't pay. And that's when you remember, oh, I was supposed to pay. That's the number one reason claims aren't paid. So that's why we have what we call brokers. And the brokers are there to help you manage your policy. If you don't have the wherewithal in your company to help you manage that, you really need to use one of our brokers so that they can help you manage your policy. What we do ask is if, so let's say a company doesn't pay you. We do ask that you do your due diligence in trying to collect. And that means make phone calls. That means send emails. And if they don't pay, then that's when you file a claim to us. A claim to us is not bad. It's not bad. So don't feel like, oh, if I file a claim, XM's going to kick me off like my insurance does, my car insurance. No, that's not the case. <laughs> That's not what we do. We actually have success stories that we use. And we use some that actually have claims because they've done what their policy is for. Um, so we don't kick you off if you file a claim. That's not the case. But you do have a time frame of when you have to file a claim. So, and if you don't file within that window and you're a day late, your claim could be denied. And let's see, that was the claims. And so that's it. That's all that I have. Um, 
we do appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come today. We hope that you have learned a lot. Um, Latanya and I will be here as well as John to, for the rest of the day and tomorrow. We actually will be leaving a little bit early tomorrow because we have a flight back to D.C., but we thank you. We appreciate you for listening to us. We do have um, Terry here who is a customer of Exxon Bank. So he can tell you what it's like to deal with Exxon Bank. <laughs> as well as he um, is with the MBDA Export Center. Who, so he knows Exxon Bank in and out. So thank you so much. Terry. <laughs> Well, we definitely want to thank the ladies for all the information they just shared. And, uh, you know, give them another round of applause, don't you know? That was good stuff. Because normally, like you say, with us being small businesses, like she said, I'm part of the export center, but I'm also an entrepreneur. You know, so financing, financing, financing. Where are you going to get the money? You know, how am I going to get paid? These are the main things that we talk about. And I was one of those people that she talked about that was doing things backwards. Okay? <laughs> I've been going to Africa since 2000. And I would broker little small deals and I would do things. And then, you know, people would be like, hey, can you give me this? Can you give me that? Can you give me this? And then I would go out and I would buy those things at a good price, you know, and I would resell them. But now, you know, it started getting bigger and bigger. And people were like, well, hey, I want to buy it, but, you know, can I pay you later? And I'm like, no, you know, they <laughs> you can't pay me later because I just tied up my money. You know, when you, when, when you order from Walmart, you know, you don't pay them later. You know, you, you got to pay them now. But again, in the business world, we know that, you know, that's not reality. You know, customers need terms because, again, they have to pay people, you know, there's things they have to do. So the African struggle in which I saw was that, like you say, people wanted to get it, but they wanted you to ship it. And you wanted them to buy it, but you wanted them to pay for it. So now what happens? No sale. So now you're stuck. So now I'll be like, man, now I got to risk, you know, $50,000, $60,000 because I don't want to lose this customer. And I want to even just get it to the port in hopes that they show up and pay. Because guess what, if they don't show up and pay, it's at the port, so now what happens? You have to pay duty, you have to try to, are you gonna ship it back, do you gonna find another customer, you know, what's gonna happen to that actual shipment? So that was another dilemma that I had, you know, with dealing, you know, with exporting things to Africa. And then the light bulb came on and somebody introduced me to the MBDA, you know, with the Export Center, which the Export Center introduced me to XM Bank. And they said, well, Terry, why don't you insure your shipments? I'm like, oh, well, I got, you know, insurance. You know, I put it in the container and it's insured. You know, if it drowns, you know, I get, you know, I get paid. They're like, no, 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 no. For your customers. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Well, so if you ship something, we can get you a policy that if they don't pay, you know, you can give them terms, you 30 days, 60 days. If they don't pay, you know, we'll pay you. We'll give you 95% of that invoiced amount. I'm like, whoa, 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 you will? I'm like, okay, well, how much does this cost? And then when they told me the cost, I looked at a $100,000 policy, and they were like, it was $500. I'm like, what? Hold up. So you're going to pay me $95,000 if they don't pay, which that's hopefully, you know, not the case. Of course, we want them to pay. But if they don't pay, you're going to pay me $95,000? you are going to give me $95,000 of my invoice amount? And they said yes. So I said, okay, where do I sign up? <laughs> so, now, so now I'm like, okay, but this is government. I know I'm about to get a big packet. You know, it's going to take me six years to fill out. It's not going to make sense. I'll need, you know, a lawyer just to go over it. So I got this little thin, what was it, a one-pager. And I'm like, well, that's it? They're like, well, yeah, and we're, we're going to put you in touch with a broker. I'm like, ah, oh, here it is. Here's the catch. You know, here's a broker. So how much is this going to cost me? So the bro I get, they put me in touch with the broker. The broker goes over the policy. And I'm like, okay, so how much is it going to cost me? He said, well, nothing. I'm like, well, what do you mean nothing? Well, you don't pay until you actually ship something. I'm like, hold up, stop. You're going to insure me for $100,000. I don't have to pay anything. You're going to give me a blanket policy that's going to cover up to 10 of my customers that I can just go out there. And you're going to vet them to make sure that they have the ability to pay us back. Well, you know, I say us now because now XM is my partner. You know, I'm not doing this alone anymore. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen. And they were like, well, well, yeah. I said, well, okay, sign me up. So it took us about 20 minutes to fill it out. And I'm like, okay, it gets down to the financials. I'm like, okay, they're going to ask for blood. I need five-year tax returns. He's like, well, no. You got a profit and loss statement from last year? I'm like, what? That's it? You just need a one page? That's it? He's like, yeah, well, just send it in. So I sent him in a simple one-pager, and then, you know, now here we are. You know, so it's a great product. And then even with that, I'm like, okay, I'm still going to tie up some money. 
I got to wait till it gets there. It's going to take 30 to 45 days, depending on where it's going to go. Then I'm giving them 30 days. So now, again, my money's tied up. And if I got two customers, let's say I have in a cost of goods sold, let's say I got $120,000 tied up. I'm like, man, a customer just called me, and they want to buy something. I can't tell them, well, wait until, you know, I get paid from them. I got turned. I can't tell them that. So, again, I talked to my expert, you know, Latanya, and she said, well, Terry, why don't you leverage the policies that you have, you know, with the bank, and then now you can free up capital. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Again, I didn't know. She said, you can take that policy to one of our partner banks, and they'll give you up to 70% of the cash value of that policy. I'm like, hold on, stop. <laughs> so now I'm going to be able to get paid ahead of, you know, getting paid? She's like, well, yeah, you can do that. So now I got the ability to free up capital, you know, to now fulfill my other customers. And they're like, well, why are you using your cash and your liquid cash to, you know, fund these deals? I'm like, well, what are the ways to do it? You know, it's, a bank doesn't want to just give you money, just, you know, ship stuff overseas because they feel it's risk. They don't care if you got, you know, whatever you got. And they're like, well, we can fund the goods that you're actually sending. I'm like, hold up. So you can finance the goods that I'm shipping. You can guarantee that I get paid on the goods that I'm shipping. Where you guys been? You know, I've been doing this really. <laughs> I've been doing this the hard way for a long time, waiting to get paid, taking me 60, 90 days or not offering terms and losing customers. So I'm like, look, this makes all the sense in the world. I'm in, like you say, I'm with XM Bank. It was an easy process. They're easy to work with. They're knowledgeable. They know what they're talking about. And it's actually real. And now, you know, we're trying to go to the next phase, you know, of getting, you know, even bigger deals. Because now, like they said, they got, they got a, a board now. And now, you know, sky's the limit. So I would definitely stress to use them. You know, the program works. It's not complicated. It's beyond simple. You know, and now I understand how, because I, you know, you'd be, at the, you'd be at the port, you know, when you actually go, sometimes I go and meet my goods, and I'll see a guy, you know, shipping eight containers, nine containers. I'm like, man, I want to be there one day. But now I have the capability of doing it because I got the guarantees, you know, with X and Bank behind me. So that's all I really, oh, got a question. Okay. No, no. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Okay, I'm sorry, no questions. After that, you can meet me in the hallway. I'll be, I'll be more than happy to answer it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, right now, the country that I've shipped to is Ghana, and actually because of Exxon Bank, now I'm able to ship to Senegal. So now I'm going to Senegal, and then now with the Fr Africa Free Trade Agreement, we're actually looking at, you know, doing, you know, a distribution center, you know, in one of the two countries, whichever the one offers us the better deal on land, so we can put a little, you know, metal building and, a, you know, a warehouse in order to distribute the goods out, whoever gives us the best deal, then now we'll have a distribution center, and then we'll just ship it all over, you know, the continent starting in 2020 in July. So we're looking forward to it. That's why we're here. We're excited. <laughs> And, you know, and I'm sorry, and, and a shameless plug, too, because, again, I do work with the Export Center out of Chicago. So, you know, we're here to help. Our job is to help minority businesses export their product or service to Africa. And like she said, it doesn't have to be a tangible product. It can actually be a service. And that's our job. And, again, we're, we're a non-for-profit organization, you know, that, that works off a, federal, a grant from the federal government. So, again, our services are free as well. So, so feel free to use us. We go on trade missions. You know, we have, we, we, we host, what, what do we host? Seminars. We host summits. We'll soon have our site up, which will have different webinars on it, to talk to people and to teach them how to trade. So that's my spiel, you know. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, okay, but that's my spell. I know it's getting late, so I don't want to keep you guys. So thank you very much, and thank you to our hostess for having us here. Thank you for the information, and thank you guys. All right. I want to talk to you, too.